Just have the legs a little bit wider. Hi, I'm Tanya. Welcome uh, to today's class. And I'm really excited about the class today because it is something that most people need nowadays. And especially if you have a job where you're sitting or you're driving, um, perhaps even um, breastfeeding, anything that puts our posture in a little bit of a round shoulderedness. So um, this is kind of an area that I'm quite passionate about because as we get older, one of the movements of the spine that we lose the most is what we call extension. So extension is when we bend the spine backwards. So <clears throat> to really keep these muscles nice and flexible in the front of the chest and to keep the back nice and strong, um, is really, really important, so especially as we get older. So without further ado, we are going to focus on chest expansion today. So opening up the chest, stretching off these muscles that can get really, um, and I use the term shrink. That's not really what happens in case <laughs> some anatomy guru watching. I know that's not what happens, but technically the muscle gets shorter. So um, I like to see my brain, I think of it, the muscle shrinks and we're trying to stop that from happening. So the first thing we're going to do is equipment. Um, so you, if you haven't got a ball, and I highly recommend jumping onto um, Amazon or eBay and just looking at Pilates ball or a bendable, they're not really that expensive and they're really cool to work with. But otherwise, just a rolled up blanket or even a cushion on, on from your sofa will work or a pillow. Um, again, if you've got pillows and stuff, you don't really need the blocks. And then if you've got um, a band, wants to be quite a soft band. So the bands come in different resistances. Resistances? <laughs> Yeah, and um, so it doesn't want to be one of the really hard ones. It wants to be a nice, easy one. And uh, like I've got a couple of blocks just in case. So first thing we're going to start with. Oh, so if you haven't got a band, a big towel, so a long towel, or perhaps a belt. Um, like not your five-year-old's belt. You want a long belt. <laughs> um, just trying to think what else you can use. Yeah. So anything, a broomstick or something that you can hold wide to start with. So um, I'm not going to be too pedantic on neutral feet and neutral pelvis because really what I'm using this for is just to warm up the shoulders before we get into some of the work. But I'm going to stand to the side with this one. So if you've got a solid thing like a belt or something, start with the hands quite wide. Because when you take it over your head, you might find that it, there's not much give. So just for the first one, have it as wide as you can, almost just so you can feel what it's like. So for me, the band's quite loose. So just standing here, I'm taking the hands up to the ceiling and the wall behind. So, oops, hit the wall. Okay. So once you've felt how that feels for you, I'm going to make mine a little bit tighter, but you might find that that was actually okay for you in that position. So we're just going to carry on with that, and I'm going to face the front now. So what I want you to notice are my shoulders. So when I come up, what I'm trying to avoid is excessive lifting of the shoulders. So even though my hands are going up, I'm thinking of dropping the shoulders down. Okay, so as the hands come up, I'm dropping the shoulders down. So what happens in our body as we uh, get into these kinds of postures is the muscles here, these are called your upper trapezius muscles around the neck and the shoulders. They become like a bully muscle. So rather than the shoulder staying down and the arm floating up, this trapezius will lift the shoulder before the arm lifts, which is incorrect muscle recruitment. That's why a lot of people have a lot of tension in their shoulders and their neck, because these muscles are doing things they shouldn't really be doing. And um, yeah, so we want to try and train these muscles to switch off until they are needed. So we take it up, shoulders down, and down the back. So just carry on with that. And now from the side, what you're trying to avoid is, I call it a tortoise head, and people giggle, so keep it clean. 
What you're trying to avoid is this. So as your hands come ducking and going under, okay, the only thing that should be moving are the arms inside of the shoulder socket. Now I appreciate if you have got any shoulder issues and your range of motion isn't brilliant, so maybe you've had an operation or you've just um, had an injury, it might be that <laughs> the hands need to be quite wide and you're going to land up smacking yourself in the head. So if that's the case, just do it without the band. Okay? So, if you have got a band, then maybe you can start to make the band just a little bit tighter. Like I said, these are really, really um, light. So up and over, keeping the body nice and tall. Good. And last one. Good. So that just opens up the chest a little bit. So what we're going to do now, warms up the shoulders. So I'm going to come down onto the mats and I'm going to use the ball, but I'll also show you how to use um, a blanket for this one. So we're going to do what I call a, a passive chest opener. So <laughs> in my world, I like to do things as simply as I can. I don't like overcomplicating that. Uh, my brain likes things easy peasy. So when it comes to stretching, we do need to be in a position for a certain amount of time. Stretching is something you've got to do often and often and often, rather than just once a week and then wonder why your back still hurts or your neck or something. So we've got to stretch. So I said, I'm going to use the ball. The ball is going to go in between the shoulders in the upper back. And I know that I have neck issues, so it might be that I'm going to put a block under my head. Okay? But it doesn't feel too bad today. So we'd be in that position. I might just use a little cushion instead. Okay? So the ball wants to be quite high so that I'm stretching off this part of the body, so like where the collarbones are, down to the rib cage, all these muscles under the arms, okay, they all get really, like I said, I like to use the term shrink, uh, you call it shorten, they get shortened and they get tight, okay, so by having this passive stretch, just gives that muscle a chance to um, become a bit more flexible, I'm losing my glasses, so you can use the ball if you have one. Um, some people try and use the, the kid's football or something, and I think that's a little bit hard. Or you can roll like a blanket up or a towel and put it in between the shoulder blades. Anything that can open up, that can stretch off the front, that's all... Uh, we need it. Doesn't, you don't have to. I didn't take my glasses off because they, I think they're quite long at the back and then as soon as they touch something. So, in the passive stretch, so passive means we're just not going to do anything, okay? But what I want you to um, do with your legs is whatever's comfortable. Some people like to lie in a butterfly. You can have your feet wide and your knees touching. You can have your legs straight. I'm not really worried about the legs today. But try and take the arms as high as you can. So like for me, my left arm, oh, I can feel it's really pulling under the armpit. So we don't want any pain. We want discomfort. And there's a difference between pain and discomfort. So if you have had... Um, especially breast cancer surgery, you might find that this is just too much. So then bring the hand a little bit lower to where you can feel it, but it's not painful. So in Pilates and yoga and anything, we never want pain in the body. There's a difference between muscles burning because we're using the muscle or pain in joints, okay? So uh, really listen to your body. That's what I love about Pilates and um, also Pilates, you can really adapt exercises for your body. And you might find that after 10 seconds or 15 seconds, the discomfort eases. 
And then what I like to do with this is really start to focus on breathing gentle, slow, but deep breaths into the upper chest area. So what we can do is we can use the breath to facilitate stretching in the body. So we've got muscles across the front of the chest. You've got muscles in between your rib cage, in between each rib. And those muscles are like any other muscle in the body. If they're not stretched, they become short. That, that will inhibit your breathing. It will make a lot of things, taking a deep breath in, challenging because there isn't space. Okay. So just spend the next minute or so like I'm, I have a little competition with myself, like how big can I make my chest and how wide can I take it over? And then when that releases a little bit, then maybe you want to take the arms a bit wider. The other aspect of this is it works on a connective tissue in the body called fascia. So fascia is, uh, there's different kinds of fascia within the body. And it's, it's, I like to think of it as a cling film. Or if you know what a mummy is wrapped like, although it's not wrapped like a mummy, but it's, it's just wrapping inside of the body and it's wrapped between each little set of muscles and then the next set of muscles and then the whole arm. And it's connected through the whole body. And there's something called the kinetic chain. So it might be that if you've um, done something to your lower back, that it presents itself in the shoulder or the ankle, or perhaps you've got an issue with your shoulder, pain with the shoulder, but it's actually the, um, the place that the pain has come, the, uh, the cause of it is actually something in the hip. Um, so this stretching helps to release the fascia in the body. So if we don't release fascia in the body, it becomes very stiff and very clogged. So, and then to release that is painful. You need my facial massage and that is like someone's tearing your skin off. And in the old days, they used to, um, you know, if you injured your shoulder or something, they said, don't move your shoulder or don't do this. And that would cause a lot of fa um, sticky fascia or the fascia builds. And then people couldn't move it. So it's really important, even if you've had an injury, to have gentle, pain-free movement. So you can see now my arms are a little bit further. Good. So bring your hands down. And then I like to just hold them to the back of the head as I bring myself up. So oh, I could lie there all day. <laughs> So now we're going to come on to just another couple of exercises which uh, my clients absolutely love. Um, one of them more so than the other one. So this one we're going to do now is called arm opening. And there is a little bit of health and safety with this one. Um, so really pay attention to what the shoulder joint is doing. So um, a block and a cushion under the head or a pillow, whatever you've got. I just happen to know that a block and a pillow is the right height for me. You might have a pillow or, again, you could use the towel. And some people don't even like to use um, a towel with that. You don't have to have it. I just, I'm all about luxury and comfort. So I'm going to come down onto the side. What I try and do is get clients to line up with the back of the mat and have the knees bent. So you can see where my knees are over there. They want to be stacked on top of each other. So if you've got one knee hanging over, then your hips are rolling forward. The hips are not straight. Perhaps you've got one knee backward. We don't want that one either. So you want to find the point where your knees are in line. Now, I appreciate some people might have a leg length discrepancy, but you want to look at the top hip. Is it above the bottom hip? Okay. Now I'm going to try and lengthen my body, so reaching at the crown of the head there and bottom of the spine down to there. Feet are together under the bum. So the hands are going to come out in front like a big crocodile jaw. Okay. My top hand, so I would watch this one to start with because it's a little bit technical. You're going to take the hand up towards the ceiling and then physically look at your hand, so turn your head. OK. 
Okay. What people do now is the shoulder comes up to the ears. So remember what I was saying in standing. It's just a natural thing the shoulder wants to do. It's that bully muscle jumping in. So take the shoulder blade and send it down your back. So now there's no shoulder stuck up next to your ear. We want to lock the shoulder into this position. So we're not actually going to move the shoulder joint. So you can see, I always say there's no bone popping out of the shoulder joint. But we're actually going to turn the spine. Okay. So from here, I'm going to start to send the rib cage backwards, but keep my hips exactly where they are. So although it looks like the hand is going back, it's not actually the arm going back because we definitely don't want this, okay? That's just um, horrible. <laughs> From there, as my rib cage goes back, my hip stays still. So for me, the, at the time of shooting this video, it's quite early in the morning. So that's about as far as I can go on this side. So if your hand is anywhere near the floor, or the top knee is lifting, then you know that your position isn't in the right place. So what I always say to people is if you've got a bone in your face, then you know that the shoulder needs to be pulled down and the hand needs to come up. It's almost better to keep the hand up towards the ceiling and then turn the spine a little bit. Still getting a stretch in the back. And then bring the hand up and bring it back down. So we're gonna carry on with those. So breathe in as the hand goes up, turn the head, shoulder blade down the back. Now lock everything here into position and just turn, think of your belly button, you're trying to get your belly button to face the ceiling. Give the knees a little bit of a squeeze to stop them from moving. And your top hip, you can almost think of trying to push your top hip forward a little bit. So we're not actively doing it, we're just trying to stop the hips from moving. So again, if your hand is anywhere near the floor, something isn't right, so check. I mean, my hand is quite high here because I'm a little bit stiff on that side of the back and then bring it back down again. Like I said, it's first thing in the morning. So we're gonna do a few more. Breathe in, shoulder blade down the back, look at your hand and now keep looking at your hand. Knees stay together, top hips slightly pushing forward. So what we can add in a little bit of abdominal work here is as you bring your arm back over, squeeze your tummy to bring the ribs back towards the center. Always good to get a little bit of abdominal work, isn't it? Looking at the hand, shoulder blade down the back. And then squeeze those tummies, bring the rib cage back over. So we'll do one more. So this is called arm opening. I don't particularly like the name of it because it already in your head it conjures the idea that we want to open up that arm. Better to call it like a, a sideline spine twist. <laughs> Good. So now we're going to go on to uh, one of the most favoritest exercises. Is that a word? Favoritest exercises of our clients. Um, in the studio. So the arm open was quite a uh, restrictive one. We didn't move a lot, but this time we're going to move and be nice and free. So again, the knees stay together, but just relax your legs, okay? We want to switch the lower half of the body off this time. So again, watch this exercise because it's a little bit technical. So imagine you had a piece of chalk in your fingers and you're going to draw a circle on the floor. Okay. Once my elbow gets to my eye, the weight of my body is going to start to roll me onto my upper back. But you've got to let this top knee lift. Okay. So that by the time I bring my hand down, so now my arms are in a T position, both my shoulder blades are on the floor. So I've got to, I'm not actively doing anything with this leg, it's just coming up on its own. And I'm gonna bring the hand down all the way over my hips and back to the start. If you've had any shoulder operation, breast cancer, frozen shoulder, anything like this, 
or you just have tight shoulders, you might get to there and it's like, oh, I can't touch the floor. That's fine. You lift your hand, find where it's uncomfortable but not painful, and then you bring it round again. Okay, so uh, for some of my clients, this is what they have to do. I've had one lady who broke the femur bone and she's in her 70s, so she's probably never going to get that full range back. But this, this exercise has helped get more range than what the doctors thought she would get back. And she's actually a very strong lady. Okay, so, and then, <laughs> again, have a little competition with yourself. Can you make a bigger circle each time you go round? Last one. So what we're doing with this one is really getting inside of that shoulder joint. So we get to do this all on the other side. Good. So knees are flush. Feet are under my bum, hands out in front. So taking the hand up towards the ceiling. Send the shoulder blade down the back and then open that up. So you can see I can go a little bit further on this side. So again, okay, be aware of your body. Like I know I did something at Christmas to my back, I have no idea what, and just that left side is so stiff. So you might find that one side is easier than the other. So what you could do, if this is so much easier for you, is go back to that other side that was tighter. Okay, because the whole idea about Pilates is trying to bring some balance back to your body. So unless you're an elite athlete, like a tennis player or something that needs that imbalance because you're using one arm more, most of us don't, don't need to have that imbalance. Good, and then bring it down. So we're just going to do one more. Hand goes up. Shoulder blade down the back, look at the hand, and then send the hand back. So always think, imagine somebody's going to give you a winning lottery ticket or a bunch of flowers. You've got to see where your hand is to grab it. Engage the knees a little bit, so just give the knees a squeeze. Gently pushing that top hip a little bit more forward. Good. Chalk circles. My chalk goes onto the floor. I draw a line towards the head. Now, this is the one, just relax your legs. As you try and draw that circle, try and keep the arms straight if you can. Now, both my shoulder blades are on the floor. Top knee is lifting. You must lift your top knee with this one. And we keep drawing a circle. Unless you're a contortionist <laughs> and you have like a jelly spine, most people need to make sure that that top knee comes off of the floor. Again, any shoulder problems or you're feeling really restricted in the shoulder, you just take the hand up over there. So I'm just going to sit up, carry on with that one. What some people will do is they'll turn, get towards the head, and then they bend the arm into that kind of a position. It's better to lift the hand than the whole time try and keep the arm straight. Okay. And as you can see, you can do this in seated as well. So in the mornings, if your husband won't get out of bed and get you a cup of tea, <laughs> go and make me a cup of tea. <laughs> You've got to train them well. So that is your chalk circles and um, arm openings. So through, um, I'm going to be doing more videos because there's so much you can do, but I'm trying to keep these videos short and sweet so that you can fit them into your everyday life. So that is all for today's session. Try and do these every day. They feel fantastic, um, especially the chalk circles. Normally I'll do that at the end of the class and then let them have a few minutes of relax in that position. So thank you for watching the video. I'm Tanya from Elite Pilates and Yoga. Have a fabulous day.